Hello everyone, David here. Now, I love playing games on little handhelds, and uh, there's so many cool, exciting models coming up, but I'm also an advocate for game streaming, running games on your powerful desktop PC, and then streaming them straight to your little smart device, whether it's a phone or a tablet, and it's even better if you can get a nice controller to go with it. Um, but there are some issues with it. If you just run Steam Link in its most basic form, you get these big black bars uh, down the side of the video, which are, well, a little bit unsightly, but also just kind of waste space. Um, you've got this lovely widescreen phone, uh, but you're only using the middle, I don't know, three quarters of it, something like that. So I was thinking, is there a way to use the full phone screen and still stream from your desktop PC? And the answer is, of course, yes. Now, I went down a bit of a rabbit hole with this one, like searching for automated scripts that you could run when you're using sunshine and moonlight and it gets a connection and it can change to like a dummy output on your video card. But overall, those solutions were very complicated, quite horrible to set up and seemed very fragile. So there's a much better way using Apollo and Artemis. Let me show you what that looks like. It's basically a fork of Sunshine and Moonlight, which I've featured before, but it has the feature of using a virtual monitor. So when I connect, my PC screen goes blank and it gives me a full widescreen image on the phone. So as long as the game supports it, you can now set a widescreen resolution and then use it on your phone and get the full screen. And I just think this looks so much better. It's so much nicer to game like this uh, really using the full width of the display um, and it looks gorgeous because it's coming from your desktop PC with its hopefully powerful GPU as well. Okay, it's actually pretty easy to set up so let's just go over the steps quickly. I'll show you how. The very quick setup steps are go to GitHub and install Apollo. Once installed, go to the system tray and open it up, create a login and password if necessary, and go to the configuration tab. Now, you don't actually want any of the advanced display device options activated, as these are vestigial features left over from the Sunshine codebase. Instead, scroll down and set headless mode. This will make sure it uses the virtual monitor feature whenever you connect. On your device, go and grab Artemis. It's only available for Android right now, but it seems like there's an iPhone and desktop version in the works too. It's supposedly still possible to use Moonlight on your client and connect to Apollo if you wish, but actually it didn't work for me. So if you are on an iOS device, you might be better off sticking with Sunshine and Moonlight for now. Your mileage will vary basically. Install it and connect to your local PC. If this is the first time connecting, you'll be prompted to enter the pin that appears, so do that. You may also have to go and edit the permissions so that the device can launch games. I just tick everything, uh, but you can be more discerning if you want to limit control for certain users. In Artemis, go to the config options and make sure you've got video resolution set to use either native or one that matches the aspect ratio for your device. For example, if you've got this Y700 tablet with a rather massive 2560 by 1600 res, you might want to scale that down to something like 1920 by 1200 using a custom resolution. And you can do that by scrolling down and setting custom resolution here. Or just rock out at native res if you have the bandwidth and eyesight to appreciate all those pixels. In the case of my S24 Ultra, you can actually choose the resolution that the phone reports as native. And Artemis sees this as coming through as the middle option, 2340 by 1080, which is still really dense, but it looks great when I have my reading glasses on. Then make sure Use Virtual Display is ticked. And while we're here, you might want to enable HDR if you have a capable device. You may also want to scroll down to Change Codec Settings and Prefer AV1 if you have a newer device, like a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 or later, as it'll be a bit quicker to decode and should be higher quality. Then start your game from the client and you're off to the races. You should already see Steam Big Picture Mode at the correct aspect ratio. When you start your game, you might need to go into the settings menu and select your widescreen res, but be warned, not all games will support this. For example, Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 and Stellar Blade do, and both look stunning, but Final Fantasy VII Rebirth does not. 
And I think this makes a huge difference. You're gaining a significant amount of the screen back, and in widescreen gives you a feeling of a much bigger FOV. If you are streaming to a small device to begin with, this definitely makes the whole experience feel a bit less cramped. And you're getting the benefits of the beefy GPU in your host PC, in my case a GeForce 4090 which eats up triangles for breakfast and delivers a consistent 60 FPS in almost all games. If you encounter this problem where you connect with Artemis but it's not blanking out your monitor and maybe it's even displaying the game on the original monitor and not your phone screen, that's probably because Windows is still trying to use the monitor instead of the virtual one. So there is a pretty simple fix for this. Um, it's probably easier to go back to your computer and just using the keyboard and mouse, go down to display settings and then make sure that the monitor is disabled. So once you click identify, you can see that the monitor is screen one, and the virtual monitor is screen three in this case. So I'm going to disable screen one, and then press keep changes, and then that will set it to only use the virtual monitor in this setup of windows and monitors and displays. And the really cool thing is that once you're done playing your game, you can disconnect from Artemis, and then your computer will just return to its previous settings and start using its original monitor setup again, eventually. Come on, there you go. I've recently found an issue with streaming to my Y700 tablet. It stutters about once a second during game streaming, making it mostly unusable. I'm sure it didn't used to do this, so I think an OS update might be at fault. It occurs in Artemis, Moonlight, and even Steam Link. So either this tablet needs a firmware update, a factory reset, or it's trying to tell me it misses Android 12. I touched on this in my last video, but you can also enable this quite simply to work outside of your house, whether you're on a train, in a hotel, or on the other side of the world. If you download and install Tailscale on both the host and client, you can set Artemis to connect to your Tailnet address instead, which will work even when you're outside of your LAN. It sets up a mesh VPN, which is secure, the traffic is encrypted, and usually direct as well. You don't need a relay server. It's the best of both worlds. So there you have it. I hope this video was educational or at least past the time. Um, I think it's pretty cool having your streaming set up with this extra bit of screen. And now you can enjoy your phone screen to its fullest. And it's actually probably a pretty decent display if it's a, a modern phone. Chances are you've got an OLED screen and it will support HDR too. So um, if you have any more comments or if you've tried this or if you have any recommendations, uh, please chuck them in the comment section below and I will read them. Uh, drop me a like and you can help me out by subscribing to the channel as well. Okay, see you next time.